Hey there, how are you today? I have a tutorial to show you today and it's a really fun one. Bonus is you don't have to have your sewing machine to do this. This is a completely non-sewing yet semi-sewing related, quilting related craft. This is what I'm going to show you how to make today. It's these little quilted looking ornaments and I have to tell you these are so cute. You can use your scraps on these which is another bonus to this activity. So let me see if I can get a close-up here so you can see. So here is a close-up of this ornament. Isn't it just adorable? Now I used a jelly roll to get all of my fabrics kind of similar, kind of matching. I'm gonna show you how to do a little bit better job on the ribbon. This was my first ornament that I made and I really, really enjoyed it. So I've made several others and I've kind of played with some things. So I'm gonna show you some of the tips and tricks and how you can make one of these ornaments yourself. If you're new to my channel, my name is Kristen. I have a blog and websites where I share tips, tricks, and tutorials for the modern quilter. I show you how to do what you love, make it easy, and incorporate it into your life so that you can create beautiful things every single day. If that's something that you're interested in, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any new content. I share new things every single week with you and I would love to hear from you. Okay, on to ornaments. Okay, so let's talk about the things that you're going to need. A jelly roll of fabric. Now you can make your own jelly rolls or you can buy a pre-cut jelly roll. A jelly roll is just a phrase for a strip of fabric that is two and a half inches wide. And it's usually the width of fabric. So it's two and a half inches wide by 40 inches. You'll need to cut your fabric in two and a half by two and a half inch squares. After you cut your fabric in those squares, you'll fold them from corner to corner to make triangles. And when you fold it, you'll want to make sure that your right sides of fabric are on the outside and the wrong sides are in the inside of your triangle. Another thing you're going to need during this project is ribbons. And this does not have to be anything special. It can be just ribbons that you dig out of your stash. It can be specialty ribbons that you find online or on sale in your shops. So you may want something that is thicker, something that is medium, and then maybe some thin ones too, just to kind of vary it up. You can even get some of the decorative ribbons. This one right here has little like hot pink snowflakes on it, um, while this one has like some rhinestones and different things on it. So just kind of a combination of ribbons and scrap ribbons. You can get festive, you can go plain and simple. This is really something that you can cater to your own tastes. Probably the most important thing that you're going to need is straight pins. I will put the links down below for everything that I purchased off of Amazon. These straight pins have a flat top on them and they are one inch and then they have the little pointy side right here. So they're one inch and they have the flat top. I also find it really helpful to have just a little small bowl or a small container that is a little bit bigger than what your pins come in so that you can um, easily pick it up and grab and work. Something else you're going to want to look at are decorative pins. The options for this are really quite endless. The ones that I chose have a pearl finish on the little head. These are for purely for decorative reasons. They really are not going to be there to hold your project together. So, you know, choose something that you like. There's different ones, there's different colors. There's all kinds of different things that you can do to decorate these. Speaking of decorating, feel free to add any little extras to these that you want. I found this bag of Jingle Bells at my craft store and I'm really looking forward to adding some of these. The last thing that you're going to need is just some general crafting supplies. And now you may find that you need a little bit more than this or a little bit less than this. It's really up to you on how you decide to customize your ornaments. What I do suggest though is a glue gun and a pair of scissors to kind of help you while you're working on this. They're just good things to have. And huh, I nearly forgot the most important thing that you're going to need styrofoam craft balls, okay? Now, these come in different sizes. So what I'm going to show you is what I have done with this size right here. You can go a little bit smaller, you can go a little bit bigger. Just realize that either way, you're going to need more or less fabric to cover these balls and possibly a slightly different arrangement of your fabric as well. So the first thing that you're going to do when you have your styrofoam ball is this step is optional, but I find that it's really helpful. If you kind of look at the ball, there is generally a very faint line 
that you will see that joins the two halves of the ball together. I like to take a pin and just carefully mark that line because it's going to help you align your fabric. Now, if you're using white fabric on any of this and you're afraid this is going to shine through, mark very lightly. You can also use a pin or a pencil to mark this so that you're not actually marking on the styrofoam and you don't have to worry about the ink showing through. But start with that very faint line that joins the two halves of the ball together, right like that. And now they both line up. So now I have a clear division of both halves of this ball. The next thing is a little bit more, um, a little harder to master, but I like to try and find the other half of the ball. Now this way does not have kind of like a faint line to follow. So you kind of have to fudge it a little bit. So I kind of like, I mark here in the center and then eyeballing it, I know like, okay, so here is the top, it lines up with this, and then I made a small mark on this side as well, so that I have a little bit of something to go to. Now it does have like, this brand of ball in particular has like, um, I'm not sure if you can see that right there, but it kind of has like a little, like a circle dot that I guess like the die or whatever was right there. So I kind of know where the center of this ball is and I'm kind of eyeballing, making sure that I'm getting this in all, you know, dividing it into four essentially. So when I have it in front of me, I'm looking at this right here and I'm gonna make kind of a mark right here where the middle is and see that it lines up. And like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. Don't freak out if you are making a really big mess of things right now. But um, you kind of want to give yourself some bit of a guideline. Now, once you get the four quadrants done, go through and mark in the middle of each quadrant one more time. So mark in between these two lines right here again eyeball it. It doesn't have to be perfect. These are guidelines. So mark in the middle of that line and then I want you to connect that line to the center right here of each of your balls. You will see where this comes in handy in just a little bit. And there we go. There is my ball all nice and marked up. It's, y'all, it's not perfect. It's kind of like slicing it like you would, like an orange or an apple, kind of like a piece of fruit. So you have eight, let's say semi-equal portions there, okay? So you did your first four and then you did your next four to divide those pieces in half. These are gonna be guidelines. Okay, so I have a ton of fabrics here to choose from. I kind of tried to like put them in little different categories so I, that I know that I have enough colors. Um, your magic number for the design that I'm going to show you, this design right here is four. You're going to need four of each of the fabrics for each row that you do. Again, you can make this any way you want. There is no right or wrong to do this. So what you're going to choose first is this fabric right here in the middle. So what I have is like a black one that has like a yellow star on it right here. You're going to choose this fabric first. So what do you want to be on your ornament? What do you want to show as the very center? I think I'm going to choose this bright green color actually. And you're going to need to have your pins close by. Okay, so for this very, very first piece, I want you to put a pin through the top side of the fabric, through the right side of the fabric, down the middle, and I am just kind of eyeballing it, okay? It doesn't have to be the exact, exact center, but as close to it as you can get. And you can see the pin is coming out the wrong side of the fabric right there. Now I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna put it right in the middle of my styrofoam ball where all of my lines come together. And I'm going to rotate the fabric to where my lines that I know are straight from when I folded it and I pressed it. Are lining up with some of the lines on my ball. So those arrows go straight here and I'm gonna put a pin 
and pin it to my ball right there, okay? The next step is you're going to come over to this other side and kind of make sure that there is no slack in the fabric here. You would like it pressed nice and tight against your ball. It doesn't have to be super tight, but you know, like I said, no slack in it to where there's like ripples or bubbles or anything. And I put a pin in that one. So I lined it up with my line, I put a pin in it. Then you're going to do the same thing with this one right here. I'm taking my finger from the middle pin that I put in and I'm just kind of making sure that my fabric doesn't go to one side or get pushed in or anything. Simple as that. And then on the final one, again, to that line, push it in. Now there is not an exact way to put these in or anything. I'm just shoving it in. Now, this pin right here is not necessary. Now all of my corners are held down. I can take this pin out because you may or may not want something nice and shiny right there on your end. So, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick out which fabrics I want to go around this. So here's my example piece right here. I have my inside fabric and then I have my first row of fabric which is closest to the inside fabric. So now we're gonna work on these that are the kind of reddish pieces. I think, I think I will choose this text one over here. Normally I kind of have these all like um, spread out. Let me give you a little bit clearer view um, of what I'm working on here and move my, my fabric piles out of the way. Okay, so with your fabric pieces, you're going to come up from the wrong side of the fabric and you're going to guesstimate where the center of your piece is again, just like we did on the first one, only you're coming from the wrong side and going outward. Remember I said this one was, that first one was different than the rest of the ones that we're going to do. So what I have right here is kind of like I said, roughly the center. It is coming straight out of that crease that we made when we ironed our fabric. And I still have a tiny little pucker where I had my pin in this fabric. So what I like to do is I like to start on that crease that went down my first piece of fabric and you put your pin in. I'm doing mine about I'm gonna say just shy of a half an inch from the center piece right there. And then, so I've got like, you know what, I will leave this here just so you can see exactly what I'm looking for because that tiny prick of fabric is a little hard to see. So here is my center point and this is where I put my next one. And then I'm going to put a pin right there. So I'm doing the kind of the same thing where I took my finger and I kind of laid the fabric out so there's not a bunch of like extra fabric, you know, uh, bundling up or making anything weird in there. And now I'm gonna do the other one. Again, going through roughly the center of my piece, except I'm gonna go on the opposite side you don't have to do exact measurements on this. You can do it semi-exact kind of, um, it's gonna take some getting used to before this is uh, very natural to you, but I can tell you that I can make these ornaments fairly quickly now. It really doesn't take much time at all. So what you want to make sure though when you're starting out is that your center point is about the same from either side of your center point on here because here is where some of the magic is going to happen. You're going to take one of your little flappy triangle things here. I'm sure there is a more correct word for that. And then you're going to fold it where it meets this point right down here at the bottom. And you're going to put a pin in it. Now your goal when you're doing these pens is to stay as low profile as possible, but this is going to get covered up. So don't get really, really hung up on being absolutely perfect. And so then I'm gonna take the other side of the little triangle thing and fold it. So now I have this cute little diamond right here. Okay, and then do the same thing on the other side. Pulling in that corner 
pointing it down to where my triangle becomes a diamond. And I have two of them already done like that. Now, as for these pieces right here, they don't need to be sticking up. So you can take your pin, push it down, and pin those corners down because you want your whole thing to lay nice and flat. Now, if you do this correctly and you get your spacing right, you will never see those pins. So there's one of them fully done. It has a pin up here at the top. It has three pins down here at the bottom. It has one pin on each side. Now you may understand why I have so many of these pins in here. And now I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side real quick. I always like to work across from the one that I just previously did. So if I do one here, the next one is gonna be here and then these two. That way I can keep the space from the center the same. So I'm gonna do the other two sides with the same fabric that I chose before. Don't forget to use these lines that you drew as a guide. That'll keep your things nice and even as you're working on them. There is my first row. This is probably the most important row because it kind of sets a scene for the rest of the ball. Okay, so you wanna make sure that things are evenly spaced here. Again, I have the little middle pin here. I normally will take that out just because it doesn't need to be there in the final thing and so I normally will take it out. But you wanna make sure that these are evenly spaced right here and that you know the sides right here they kind of hit the same spot all the way around the ball. You don't want one to be like significantly lower than the others because like I said, this sets the tone for the rest of the ball. The next ones, you're going to do the exact same way. So exactly how we made them before, put the pin right in the middle of your triangle, pointy side out, except you're not going to work off of this row right here. You're going to go square in between. Now, you see this line right here? It should line up with your needle. So imagine that line going all the way up and inside underneath your fabric there. I know there's a little pucker of fabric right here. If you can see right there, there's a little pucker of fabric. It's okay, you're trying to get a square piece of fabric over a round ball, it's not gonna happen. But that will disappear, so. This is just slightly over a quarter of an inch is what I've done here. So just, I mean, just like barely, barely over a quarter of an inch is where I put this. So I'm using these two right here as kind of my starting line, going straight square in between those and then going down a little over a quarter of an inch. And then I'm gonna do the exact same process Some of my pens don't have points on them and that's bothersome to me. There we go. So I'm gonna do the exact same process of starting, then pinning the bottom, and then coming over here and doing this. Technically, you could do this with less pins if you didn't do the three at the bottom and you did two, but I really like the way that the three keeps everything nice and flat for me while I'm working. Um, 
I suppose if you got really good at it, you could do it with even less. But I like pinning these two separate down here instead of overlapping because you get this nice flat seam of fabric right here. Now you can kind of get into a rhythm of if you want to pin these last flaps down all at once or I normally save them for after I have all of my pieces in place. It really doesn't matter, you know, just kind of whatever you feel like doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the other three pieces to this. four pieces. Now I'm going to give you a tip on when you're pinning these corners. As you can see from the white ones, those little corners that we pinned, those are buried underneath the fabric here. So you're never going to see them. But here's a tip. As this ball gets wider and wider here at the middle, you're going to make sure you have the pins in as far close to the corner as you can get them. Now this one right here, I kind of pinned a little bit too far in for my likings. Now, it's hard to explain right now, but trust me, that's important later on. You're going to want to have those pins as close to the corners as you can possibly get them. So, kind of make sure all my pins are as far in as they can so I don't have a whole lot of texture on my ball. I like the fabric to be the texture, not some lumpy pins, but there we go. It's starting to kind of look like something really adorable, isn't it? Okay, so let's get our next row ready. The next row you're going to rotate and do just underneath this first row that we did. So you're doing in between each one that you just did. Remember I said about four pieces of fabric? You're going to need one, two, three, four, all the way around. You're going to go just slightly over a quarter of an inch again. That's kind of what I, I eyeball things most of the time when I'm sitting on the couch making these, but that's kind of what you need to shoot for in terms of even fabric distribution. And again, as you get closer and closer as the ball widens out, you're going to want to have as much fabric coverage as you possibly can. Another row is done, just like that. I want you to just keep doing the exact same thing that you have been doing. You can go another row all the way around. This time you're gonna do it on the ones in between again. And just keep going until you start building that beautiful network of fabric all the way down the ball. let's talk about some problems that may come up while you're working on this. Now, if you're getting like super good at this and you're, you know, kind of experimenting with going a little over a quarter of an inch here, a little bit more than over a quarter of an inch, you're getting into like the half inch or, um, you know, you can always go smaller 
and keep your fabrics closer together. That will give you a nicer, tighter border right here and you'll certainly have more fabric on these. But if you start to get too big and too wide, what's gonna happen is you're gonna start to see these little bitty pins through your fabric. You'll find that as you hit kind of more the middle range of your ball, that is going to happen more and more. And this one right here, like right here. Now I know I'm being super picky about this because nobody is going to look at my tree and actually see this, but right there, there's the head of a pin. Like I just barely, barely covered it. And then you can see on this side that I didn't quite cover it but at that point, I was trying not to be too hard on myself. So, um, you know, you can see, look, here's another one right there. If you closely inspect my stuff, you're gonna be able to see those little pin moments. Here's one that I was working on last night and you can see a few pins kind of snuck through there. Now you can do a couple things. You can go in, you can pull out that pin and you can move it and kind of tuck it further underneath the fabric if you like, or you can just let it be part of the beauty of your overall project and realize that if somebody starts to pick out your little pins in the midst of all of this beautiful fabric, then maybe they don't need to be looking at your <laughs> at your tree there. Here's another one that I was working on. Um, let's see. I know there was a few pins on this one. There's one right there that kind of stuck out a little bit. But you know, as you get further down your ornament, you're going to see more of that happening. This is one of those projects that you just kind of go with the flow on whatever happens is easily fixable and you just may have to unpin things a little bit to keep it going. So here's where we're at so far. We have lots of nice, pretty colors there. I love the way this one's turning out. You kind of had the mix of the pinks and the greens and all there coming in. What I would do probably on here is I'm gonna add another row of fabric on top of these yellow ones. And I have two choices. I have this method right here where I can, this is like where I started, and then you just go all the way until you get to the top here. And when all of these come together, let me see if I can pull back my little bow there. When all of these come together, you just kind of cover it up with a little bit of a ribbon poof here and a hanger. So you won't see any of that. The other option is what I've done with this one right here. And I'm gonna show you how I finish this one up. I started here and I added some of the fabric down, do, 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 just like that. And then I, flipped it over and I did the exact same thing on the other pole of my ball, the other the other like center marks right here. And I did the exact same thing. So both sides match. So the difference is this ornament is going to hang like this on my tree. So you'll see kind of almost like a pine cone pattern on it. This ornament is going to hang with the designs sideways. Okay, so it's going to look like this and a common method to fixing all of these centers right here because I'm sure you're asking like, well, what do you do about all those pins and all the ugly centers? A common method to fix this is this right here, which is where your fun ribbons and things come into play. So you can take a nice piece of ribbon, decorative ribbon, you know, however you want to do it. You can uh, make a strip of fabric to go around it. You can kind of fix up the edges this is where you got to get creative. And just for the sake of right now, I'm going to stick a pin in it so that I can show you. So here's the example with the ribbon on there. Just so you can see this one, I would actually attach the, the hanging part right here. And I would probably put a nice pretty little bow around it to where it'll kind of, um, kind of mask this area right here where the ribbons come together. I would definitely hit this with my glue gun on both sides of the ribbon to keep it nice and flat all the way around. See how it hides our pins all the way around? Nice and pretty, you can't see them. And even if you can see them, it's okay. There's a little bit left there. Now I'm gonna continue working on this one and I will be back in just a moment to show you how it looks. So here is my finished ornament. I kind of, um, you know, I got to play with colors on this time. I kind of did like a little bit of a pattern here and here working with the yellows and the greens. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm really happy with the way that this turned out. As you 
do more of these and you get more comfortable with it, you can kind of play with different patterns on here. There really is no right or wrong way to do it. Um, here's what the top looks like. This, I could go another four um, diamonds all the way around here, which would bring this a little bit closer in between. But uh, what I'm gonna do with the ribbons, you'll see, is going to kind of cover that up. So that's what we want to do right now is our next step is to cover this up. So here's what it looks like on the top. Here's what it looks like on the bottom. And here is the finished product. Isn't this just the cutest thing? Oh, I love the way this turned out. Look how fluffy these little bows are. You can also fussy cut this area right here if you like. Isn't that so cute? Now, let me show you how I made this bow because it is so easy. So I just chose a very simple, very plain white grosgrain ribbon. And I have three different sizes that are not really specific, okay? I just kind of randomly cut them and then I have a shiny green one. So my sizes of ribbon, like I said, I roughly did them so I did not measure originally, but I have a 10 and a half inch one. I have a seven inch one and um, again, roughly like a little over five inch one. So it's a little hard to see these on my table, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold my ribbon in half like this, and I'm going to place it in the middle of my piece. And then I'm gonna bring the two ends over. So what I've done is I've placed the middle of the ribbon right here. Again, I just kind of eyeballed it and I added this right here. Now, do you see how it is strategically covering this part right here? Okay, so I cut, I cut two of each ribbon and then I'm going to fold this to where it, my ribbons kind of overlap right here in the middle and I'm going to stick a pin right there. Okay, so now you have the option and I probably will do this after I get my ribbons set straight of putting a little dab of hot glue right here to keep this in place because all we're doing at this point is we're making it really cute by adding a big fluffy bow on top but we are also covering up the areas that I really don't want people to see. So then I'm gonna take my other ribbon that is the big ribbon and I'm gonna do the exact same thing by folding it in half, placing it in the middle again and then overlapping these two pieces. Now, if you really wanted to, you could go in and do one pin for all of these, but I find it easier just to do you know, a pin as I go. So this is what I've got so far. So here's what it looks like from the side, and I just moved it. <laughs> so I arranged these longer ribbons right in place of where those crossovers happen. So again, after I'm done with this, I will probably hit it with the glue gun to make sure that these don't slide around in place. But to make it more fun, I'm gonna make a little bit more floppy. Now this is my medium sized ribbon here. See, I folded it in half. I put my finger right here in the middle and kind of let it flop. Now I'm going in between again. And I'm just kind of holding it in place and folding this ribbon on top of itself right here to where they overlap just slightly. Now this is kind of a cheater way to do a bow, but I find it so much easier than like going about all the fuss of actually making a real bow. So there is that. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with this other medium piece right here, which is roughly fold it in half, 
fold up these little corner pieces. And then stick a pin, oops, right on top of the other pin. There we go. Stick a pin right in the middle of it. So what I've done is I've made this cute little bow on top of it. You see that? And because I didn't have to like tie it all exactly, they're nice and floppy. So what you're getting is this beautiful little thing. Now, if you want, you can add some pieces inside that are like longer and will hang off. This is gonna be your preference, okay? So I'm gonna ask you, be creative with this. If you wanted to take it further, not saying you have to, but you can certainly add another bit here with your teeny tiny pieces. Those ones were optional, but if you wanna add a little bit more to your bow. And then before you do your last one, I am going to ask you to do this. So this is the piece that is actually going to hang from the tree. Take it in crossways like that. This is going to sit right here. And I'm gonna stick another pin in it now this is before I do my last piece, right? So let me put in another pin just so I can make sure that it's secure and then I'll get in a closer shot right there. So I stuck two pins to make sure that this is nice and secure. This is what's gonna hang from the tree. Very simple, very cute, but it's not so cute right there, is it? So this is my last and final ribbon piece. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna take the two ends, I'm going to overlap them just slightly. So I've just made a circle with it. That's all that I've done. They're just overlapped just a little bit. And then I am going to push it to the back and it's kind of like, like bow tie pasta is, okay? It's just gonna kind of come together in the middle here. we're gonna make a little bow, but it's nice and tight in the middle. Now, you can get a piece of string or whatever you choose to do this in to make this stay tight, okay? You want to wrap it around and around several times. Again, all we're doing is keeping this nice and tight because this is the very final top layer. And then you can tie it and it's really that simple. If one of the ends comes out, just tie it up again, because I just kind of messed up right there a little bit. Now, for the time being, I will probably take this off and put a little bit of hot glue on this later to make sure that it stays in place. But for the time being, I am going to stick a pin straight down in it and there it is. So I have covered up all of my pins. I have made all of my little mistakes up in here. I have covered those up and I have an adorable little ornament with tons of cuteness added to it. I absolutely love it. There's a few strands in there that I can trim off after I hot glue that together. Now, now hot glue is just a bonus on this, okay? It's it's to make things secure and make sure that they don't start to come off in any certain way. Um, truthfully, there's so many pins that are holding this together, you're going to end up, uh, you know, it's probably not gonna go anywhere. But if it makes you feel better, you can hot glue a little bit in here um, underneath these ribbons to make sure that they stay down. That's that. Isn't this just adorable? I love the way this came out. I love the greens mixed in here. I love that little tiny touch of pink down at the bottom. I love the star shapes. I love how quilty it is. I love this fabric. I can't wait to hang this one up on my tree. So what did you think? I want to know what you thought about these ornaments, what you thought about the process of how to make them. If you actually followed along with me and you made it, I wanna see pictures of it. Feel free to send them to my email or um, get in contact with me through my blog. I would love to see your beautiful ornaments. Now, 
you will notice that this probably took you kind of a long time. I can tell you from experience that your first ornament is going to take the longest, okay? After that, the ornaments come much easier and much faster, okay? Here's another one that I did and I added the little pearls to it kind of sporadically and it turned out so cute. The more you do it, the more that you practice, the easier it's gonna get. And that's what I absolutely love about this. It's something that is brand new to you and it's really, really hard. Eventually becomes second nature and it becomes awesome. So please do share with me if you go ahead and make these Christmas ornaments, these um, decorations, or even like, they don't have to be Christmas ornaments. They could be little balls in like a, a decorative bowl or something. I hope that you had fun today and I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. Remember, subscribe to this channel and uh, you will get updates every single time that I post a new video. My name is Kristen with IsaceStarsQuilting.com and I hope that you have a wonderful day. Enjoy your crafty time and I will talk to you again soon. Bye.